Welcome to lecture six, introduction to quantum algorithms. A very basic introduction. Actually, all I want to do is to give you a gist of the idea how quantum algorithms work and perhaps uh, describe uh, two or three, uh, just um, to uh, give you something to study further. And if you're interested, of course, there are lecture notes and uh, uh, there's lots of written about it in if you just uh, Google quantum algorithms. Um, you already know or you should know why quantum computers are more powerful and the reason is that we use what quantum interference of course so it's all about quantum interference when we have a, a computing device it's a physical device of course computation is a physical process remember that um, we prepare it in some initial state, we call it input, it has some computational meaning, usually it's a very trivial state, like you know, all qubits in state zero. We start the process and uh, we build a quantum interference pattern so that uh, the final states of the, of the device um, represent the different possible answers to your computational problem. And the probabilities that they will appear depend on quantum interference in the system. So it depends crucially on different phase factors, on different computational paths that lead from the input to the output. So this we already know. So the art of quantum computing um, or the art of designing quantum algorithms is to make sure that we have constructive interference on the answers which are the, the correct answers to the problem we are solving and destructive interference on, on, on everything else. So you do remember the golden sequence for quantum interference, at least at the single qubit level. Um, that was uh, the sequence Hadamard, phase gate, Hadamard. And uh, the reason, you know, I was so sort of obsessed about this sequence is it's not only that um, it's just um, a canonical sequence for, for, for single qubit quantum interference. Uh, and uh, I wanted you to simply understand it, uh, that uh, it represents a generic um, uh, interference on a single qubit. But, but you know, the real reason I was, I was uh, so enthusiastic about it was simply because I want to now show you that uh, the quantum algorithm that we are going to discuss will actually follow this pattern. Um, so we do understand that uh, the qubit prepared in state zero uh, goes through the first Hadamard gate and the, the purpose of the first Hadamard gate is to prepare all possible values that the qubit can have so it goes into a superposition of 0 and 1 and so what else can you do is just um, try all possible values of, of your qubit and then in, uh, in the center we have the phase gate the phase gate uh, just looks innocuous but is actually probably the most important gate, the gate that controls the outcomes because uh, the probabilities will depend on, on this particular phase. So the phase gate uh, will introduce different phase factors um, into the two computational paths that you have in this particular diagram, one corresponding to qubit being state zero, the other one corresponding to the qubit being state one. And then of course uh, you have to close this interference. It's, it's not good at this point to measure uh, the, the bit values because then you lose uh, the advantage of quantum interference. You have to close the interference to see the interference, so to speak. And so the Hadamard, the second Hadamard plays this role. Now what I'm going to tell you uh, during uh, next few lectures about quantum algorithms that in fact uh, quantum algorithms is uh, do have actually um, pretty much this structure if we, if we just write the circuits for different quantum algorithms except that um, the phase is introduced through quantum function evaluation so there is uh, an extra element here where we compute functions so you, you expect this of course you know we're talking about computation so you expect at some point we'll be computing functions and I will tell you about quantum function evaluation. So this diagram um, represents a quantum function evaluations. The way we are going to do it in quantum, uh, in quantum scenario is uh, to um, have two registers. In, in this case, we just have two qubits. And uh, the value, so the, the, the value of x is, is just here. So the qubit will be either in 0 or 1. 
and the value of the function will be stored in the another register, but I will explain it in the moment. But the, the, the most important thing, um, this is kind of like a spoiler for, for the rest of my narrative uh, in this lecture, is that this quantum function evaluation, all it does is it introduces a phase shift here. So it will just introduce a certain phase shift. So somehow, you know, even though the values of the functions will be stored in the second register, they don't matter that much. So the second register, as soon as we do the quantum function evaluation, is, is, is pretty much irrelevant. All interesting stuff is happening in the first register here. Uh, so that is where the quantum interference is happening. And the quantum function evaluations plays a crucial role, introduces all those interesting phase factors in, in different computational paths. So of course, you know, this is a very simplistic diagram. It's going to be, uh, uh, we're not going to only play <laughs> with the one qubit. Uh, as input, we will have many qubits. So we, and this is a more appropriate diagram. And uh, we will have um, this quantum function evaluation on, on a number of qubits. And the function can also have values which will be stored in a register that has more than one qubit. But uh, the generic structure will be of this type. So usually we will start with all qubits set up to state 0. And then it will be a Hadamard quantum function evaluation Hadamard. It doesn't have to be Hadamard, actually, per se. Uh, in general, it can be something that we call quantum Fourier transform. So let me just put it F here. And um, you can, in fact, define uh, quantum Fourier transform for any group. So if it's some sort of higher level of abstraction, we'll be, we'll be talking about Hadamard as a, as a special example of the quantum Fourier transform. But you can define quantum Fourier transform using group characters um, as a unitary change of basis. Um, and uh, we will not perhaps go too much into details, but I, I'll say a few words about, about it. So for now, the quantum algorithm will have structure Fourier function evaluation Fourier. So it's uh, three times F, right? So Fourier function Fourier. Um, which, uh, Fourier will be most of the time Hadamard transform. So that's kind of like uh, a, a brief overview of uh, what I'm going to talk about. And uh, I would like uh, to now uh, capitalize on our sort of um, basic introduction to quantum interference, tell you about um, uh, quantum algorithms, and uh, talk a little bit perhaps about uh, computational complexity classes, because um, that's how we try to quantify whether a given algorithm is better than the other. So let's see how it goes.